Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Derek and this is the guidebook. Today I'm going to be modifying the minimalist trunk camper build that I built about a year, year and a half ago. I've been testing out over time and I found some things that I do like and that I don't like about it and we're going to be changing those up. I like the cubbies and I like the shelves, but I think I'm going to shorten them a little bit so we just have a little bit more room down here at the end for maybe some possibly bigger bins. And I like the bin storage, but I don't like how many of them are, there are, and I don't like that I can't really reach them when standing outside the truck. One of the other things that I want to change is these lights, these strip lights that I have on either side. I got everything cleared out of here, and the first thing I'm going to tackle is shortening these cubbies. The wheel well ends right here, so I think I'll just start by shortening this cubby right to the start of this opening, removing all of this, so we have some extra room for our feet here. Do the same on this side. This cubby I actually put a little further forward, so I'll probably just measure off of this one and make sure both sides are the same length. This one might be cut here. And then we're kind of going to do the same thing with these shelves up here. I got the cubbies detached from the sides, I got the cargo nets taken down from the shelves, and I actually got this one already pulled out, and it's over here now. So this one, I am going to cut it right here, remove this whole section, and then we're going to go throw it back in the truck and just see how it fits, see how shaky it is with only one connection point, and we'll kind of go from there. <laughs> go just kind of a little test fit to see what we're working with now so we still have that whole back portion and then right as the wheel well ends our cubby ends and I didn't want to bring it all the way to the end here because there's this kind of soft curve of the wheel well and I wanted to be able to kind of utilize that if our sleeping bags or legs are against that that'll just be a little nicer than a sharp curve here now we have all this open space here for our feet and then for our new bins to go up above here. For this testing period of this new setup that I'm building, I'm not gonna really make any of this look pretty either. This is just gonna be another test. I wanna make sure this new setup works, and then I will rebuild it all and make it look nice in the future. But the only thing I might do here to make it look a little bit better and add some strength is add a little piece just right across here. That'll kinda strengthen this end back up and make it look a little bit nicer. There we go, got our little end piece strengthener on. Time to move on to the next two parts. Because I now don't have that second super strong connection point up at the front, I'm also gonna move this connection point a little bit further up. So now that turnbuckle will be pulling more down and back to hopefully cinch this in place a little bit better. So we'll put this in there. Yep. The next thing I'm going to do to make this area back here more accessible is I'm just going to cut straight back from here and then straight here and just kind of open this up so we can put things down in here and actually use this space that's behind that turnbuckle. <laughs> turnbuckle connected and see just how sturdy it is just right now I mean honestly that's in there so now we have quite a bit more room for our feet up here we still have use of this big back cubby here and now we have use of this space behind the turnbuckle next I'm gonna do the same thing that I did to this cubby right here to the other cubby on the other side and then we'll move on to these shelves So I have all the same main things done to this one that I did to the first side. On this side though, since that connection point is further back and would kind of block opening this, I might chop this here and make and chop this here and just make this cubby hole much larger here and more usable. I couldn't really do that on the other one because I needed something to support against the back, but since I'll still be leaving this piece here, this will support against the side of the truck and I can open this hole up and make this bigger, make this more usable. This one 
is not quite as secure since that tie down point is further, further back on this one, but still, I mean, it shakes the whole bit of the truck. There's definitely some more movement up here, but I'm not really worried about that. I was thinking I was gonna have to make another connection point, maybe through one of these other tie downs here, but at least for now, I'm gonna leave it. I mean, when the bed is in here, the bed fits pretty tightly in between these anyways, so I don't really think this is going anywhere. Here's what I'm talking about with my much larger cubby now. This is going to be much more usable and we have our turnbuckle down back in there and that backspace is really never going to be very usable. One thing before I continue, if you liked this original build the way it was and want to do something similar, I did make a truck camper build. I think there's like part one, two, and maybe three that are also on my channel. So if you liked it and wanted to match exactly what I did, you can go back and watch those and that'll pretty much explain everything that was existing in here before. Perfect. One thing that I've noticed with these shelves is since this back part had no connection and I just assumed it wouldn't move because it's notched out around this piece here, uh, sometimes on really bumpy roads they will actually get like bumped out and the move out of place and now since I have these extra turnbuckles from either side, since there's no front connection of the cubby, so I think I might hook these turnbuckles onto this little tie down here and then attach them to the shelf here and then I can really cinch this down and these shelves shouldn't pop out anymore. So we're going to do that next. It's not going anywhere now. Now we can start working on adding our mounting plate here and here for our other bins and I'll kind of show you what that's going to look like. My idea for these side boxes is to take a plate, a mounting plate almost, and attach it here. So I can attach these wall mounts that come with these new rigid toolboxes. They mount on the back here. They slide right in in these two spots. My plan is to make a plate that I can mount these two, and then I can take the box it right up on there. I know these are wall mounts. They're not made for movement, so they might not hold up the best, but I just kind of want to see how they do. If I have to remake these out of metal or something like that, you know, so be it. Eventually, I'm probably going to remake this whole thing out of metal, so I'm not too worried about it. But just so you can kind of visualize, this toolbox is going to be mounted about here against this wall. And we'll still be able to, you know, open it most of the way in here if we want to access thing. But mainly what we'll probably do when we want to use these is before we start cooking, if I just come in here, lift it up off, take it out. And then we have all of our stuff for cooking outside already. And we want to go to bed instead of having to go throw it up in the cab or things like that. Put it right back up on top of here and then should have plenty of space underneath for our feet. So I've already mocked up a little square here to cut out for this piece that holds the camper shell on. I'm going to get this cut out and kind of see how I'm going to mount this. And just hold it up here and it fits good. I mean, I cut the whole way bigger than it needs to be just so I wouldn't have to be being super accurate with it. We have a tie down point right behind here. So I'm thinking of possibly making some way for it to attach to this tie down and then a piece up here to rest on top of this ledge here so it has something supporting it vertically and then the tie down point here would be used to kind of cinch it in against the wall so then it can't move so that's the that's the plan and I'll obviously have to have something behind here to put it against this so this can't like tilt in like this I'll have to keep it out and we'll use that tie down to cinch it in against this wall and we'll use the piece up across back here to hold it vertically and then after that it'll be pretty simple just attaching these onto here putting the box in place and we're good to go
You also might be thinking the same thing I'm thinking right now. There's no way that's gonna hold up on bumpy roads or driving off-road or long-term. I'm not quite sure how it's gonna hold up. I just am hoping to see how this system kind of fits and how the space works and how all that goes. More than likely, this is gonna be kind of my final iteration of this setup. I just wanna test it out a few times first, and if everything works and if everything is in the proper placement, I'll most likely weld up some steel frames. I just didn't wanna make something out of steel now and then use this setup and be like, I don't like the way this is, and then I would have wasted all that time and all the steel and everything to weld it up. I'd much rather just use some scrap wood, try it out and see how it goes. So that's kind of how this system is going to be. I think it's going to work well, but I really want to test it out for at least a few months and see how I like it before I make it more permanent and, you know, weld it up out of steel. It is day two and I got my hardware to attach these side mounts for the boxes to this tie off point right here. My hope is that this unthreaded portion of the bolt isn't too long, because that's going to be kind of a bummer. Dang, just like I thought. <sighs> Try number two now. I just went back to the hardware store and found a slightly smaller hook. Hopefully this is still strong enough, and this should work this time. There we go. Just all threads there. Good to go. Throw a washer on there, and then we'll get that tightened up, and then we're going to have to chop off the end of this bolt. Got my bolt marked right here where I want to cut it, and I threaded the nuts on here. So when I cut it, this is going to be a little jacked up, and I'll just thread these back off, and I'll fix those threads at the end so I can actually get the nuts back on there. This is what I was talking about before. See how the end of it's all messed up? I'm going to take a file and kind of clean it off a little bit, and then I'll just take these nuts and twist them down here, and they'll kind of fix those threads. Okay, that is, that is on there. Get one more little crank. I don't want to like over tighten this thing. Then usually you would just want to use a lock nut. Um, I forgot to buy lock nuts and I didn't have any of that for these. So I'm just going to throw a second nut on there and hopefully that helps. So anything that's moving, you want to use lock nuts so things don't vibrate out. So I'll probably replace these with lock nuts at some point when I remember to go get more. But right now, hopefully just cranking down a second one of these. Kind of locks it in place. I went on there nice and easy. My only concern is if I push down on this bin, you know, wobbly, it does move there. I figured out a partial solution to the problem. Now if I pull on, down on this, that barely moves at all. The reason is because this piece of wood was flexing. So I just added a piece of wood back here to support it so this couldn't flex in. And now it's much sturdier. I was hoping I wouldn't have to put something here because I was hoping I could slide our camp stove right up behind here. That was my plan initially, but that's probably gonna have to change. On the metal version, I might be able to secure it in a way where there's a space for the camp stove, but at least this way, probably not. The next thing I'm working on in here is going to be the lighting. Right now, I have these strip lights up here and they run along the entire edge of my windows and they're great. They honestly light up the cab really well. The one thing they don't light up very well is the tailgate. And the other problem is the switches for them are like right down here at the ends of the tailgate. So if I'm laying back here to go to sleep, I gotta sit up, lean over here, try to reach and find this in the dark. And it's just kind of a pain. The other problem is since they're on the edges of the window, if I wanna make any window covers, it covers up my light. So that's also an issue. So what I'm planning to do is I got a four pack of these little lightweight LED light strips on Amazon. And I'm gonna try to put a few of them up on the ceiling. Put one here on this side, one here on this side. And they actually have the switch on the end of the light bar. So I can just, you know, sit up, 
hit the button and turn off the light. And then I'm gonna put a third one here on the inside of this window to illuminate the tailgate. And I think this will give us much better light on the tailgate. For this one, I'm planning to use double-sided tape to adhere this to the inside of the window. Hopefully that holds. And then for the ones in here, my plan as of right now is to put the hooks side of Velcro along the whole back of this and then just stick it up here to the ceiling. Here is the plan. We have our three lights that each have their own individual switch. We have what we're going to use to give it power, this male end of the cigarette lighter, which I'm going to snip these off and just wire these in. And we have our wire here that we're going to use to connect everything. And then this wire actually came with a bunch of heat shrink tubing, which is awesome. Um, I'm going to try to use this. I also got some heat shrink tubing because I didn't realize it was going to come with it. So we're going to cover that up with heat shrink tubing too, and we should be good to go. Okay, we got all these stripped. Now I'm just going to slide these on to either side so I know they're on here. Because a lot of times you'll make all your connections and then you'll realize you forgot to slide the heat shrink tubing on. So at least I do end up doing that. Turn on our DC. Sweet. I got some solder on each of these. I honestly don't know how much that's even gonna do. I'm definitely not even remotely good at doing that. So I'm also gonna throw some electrical tape on these, get the heat shrink tubing over them, and hopefully everything will stay secure. Okay, so all three still work. Let me just see, on the Jackery, 17 watts about. The old USB lights that I had, where it was two USB lights, those I think would pull like 12 watts, the two of those. So hopefully this doesn't drain this battery too much faster. I wouldn't think it would. The other lights I could run pretty much forever and it would barely drain this Jackery. So let's get these installed in the truck. Now, what I'm gonna do is kind of just clean up all this wiring and I'm just gonna use some of the extra roll of Velcro to just stick the rest of this wiring to the ceiling so it's not holding down. It's not really ideal since it's like Velcro tape, but I have a bunch of it, so I might as well use it. Got it all wired up now. It's definitely not the prettiest thing, but it's gonna get the job done. So we got one light, we just got a bunch of these little strips. Really wanted it to be secure. I'm gonna try to find something like sheets, maybe, of this hooks to just cover a large section so I don't have to have it looking like this. But for now, this will work. Probably gonna throw a piece of tape on here just as some extra securing it in place. But yeah, we got all three lights. Got it plugged in now to the Jackery. I'll turn them on. The last more, you know, permanent part of the build, something that stays fixed in place is my little makeshift jackery mount that I have here. Uh, this is just what I made for right now. It's just kind of a plate that I'm gonna mount down on here and it holds the jackery in place using this piece right here. Since this little base is metal and I don't want it scratching up the jackery and just for a little bit tighter of a fit, I cut this little piece of this like thin carpet that I had. And I set the jackery down in there. Then I take this big, it's pretty much like a huge industrial twist tie almost, but take this and I just kind of run it diagonally through there, come through the other side and pull it tight. And I just kind of wrap it around there and it holds it pretty securely in place in here so it's not shaking around while we're driving on bumpy roads and things like that and i can just plug my lights right in here turn on that dc power i'm good to go
We are also going on a two night camping trip starting tonight. So I'm gonna pack the truck up like it would be packed up for any normal camping trip for us. You can kind of see what it all looks like all put together. We also got a new like six and a half gallon water jug. We, I think we had a four and a half before and it was a little too small and it was more square so it couldn't fit in the back of the truck here with this one. Actually fits back here perfectly. So now we can keep our water truck in the cab, which should keep it a little bit warmer on these cold trips too. This is pretty much completely full except for our hiking backpacks. And you can see the back seat is completely empty. I mean, there's things on the floor here, but our dog has plenty of space across the seat. And then the back right now, the only thing that is on the bed are these two big duffel bags, one of which is our pillows and extra blankets, and the other one is our sleeping bags. So with the setup this way, now we don't have to move anything when we want to sleep. We can keep everything in its place, and we can sleep in the bed, and we're good to go. That was a big pet peeve with the other build, is I constantly just had things on the bed, and I'd be moving them to the back seat, and then moving them back in the morning, and it was kind of a total pain. So this way, we shouldn't really have to move anything. The only thing we'll probably ever have to move is if we bring a cooler, which sometimes we do on trips. This trip that we're about to go on, we'll probably bring a cooler and that'll just sit on the bed and that'll be the one thing that I'll move in between. For right now, this is the new setup. I'm gonna test it out this weekend. We'll probably test it out a few more times and if we like the way it works, We'll keep it and I'll maybe make some of these things more permanent. If we don't like it, I'll change it up again. And eventually I will have like an ultimate minimalist truck camper build set up for you guys. That should be like my vision of the perfect truck camper setup. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you have any ideas, leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Honestly, I can come up with whatever I want, but you might take a completely different look at this and have a great idea that could make this 10 times better. So if you have some ideas, leave them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.